things. Today I have another Gizmo gadget uh, wonderful thing sent to me from icstation.com for a review and this one I'm quite excited about because I have not seen something like this before. Um, can you guess what it is? It's got three buttons, a USB port, a three-digit LED 7 segment display, two outputs and a serial port connector. What could it be? So let's open the package and take it out and here is the board up close. So what we see over here there is a diode SS34, I think that's shot key, 7150H or 715CH, I think that's a, just a voltage regulator. Um, there's two transistors on the towards the outputs. Outputs are marked PW1, ground, PW2 and ground. And there is three buttons going set, up, down and a USB port and nothing on the back. It says XYPWM so that might give away a little bit of what it is. But let's power this up. So I'm just going to use the power supply, the power board and it says FA1 100 and we can DU, do DU150 then FA2 oh that's FR2 100 and DU2 50 and it goes back to FA1 oh FR1 it's FR not FA so if we press and hold set no nothing happens I've got all three zeros and three dots I've pressed and held it for a while not sure what's happening I'll do it again now it says 100 D1 FR2 D2 FR1 okay it will go up to 999 from zero presumably or one yeah, from 0 to 999. Okay, let's end the mystery. Um, let's uh, look at the listing. This is where it came from, the IC station, ICs and robot gadgets. And I'm going to try to find it now on the website. What could I type in? Uh, let's try generator converter. No generator pulse. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Page one of two. This may take a while. Ah, there we go. This is the product that we are after. And uh, as in the previous video, um, IC Station wanted me to mention that there are some good discounts coming up on Boxing Day and there will be some gifts happening as well so feel free to head over to the website and also you may use a discount code that I'm going to pop into the video description that gives you 10% off of your order and it's a one-time use discount so uh, use it wisely um, that's all I can say but this product here um, four dollars sixty five so roughly three pounds and eight pence and the pictures look exactly as what we have in here little module the backboard and again we've got someone holding it okay so it will take 5 to 30 volts um, or 5 volts from USB uh, frequency from 1 Hertz to 150 kilohertz with 2% precision uh, output current up to 30 milliamps which is quite a bit uh, the default is 5 volt peak to peak uh, on the output but that can be changed uh, application fields a square wave generator to generate square wave for experiment development so this is a square wave generator um, used to drive stepping motors drive a square wave square wave and uh, generate adjustable pulses for MCU using okay so basically what it is it's a it's a micro with a display a couple of buttons and 
um, really clever little gadget, little handy thing to have because you can set the frequency and you can set the pulse width um, or the duty cycle on there on both channels which is really handy if you want to test some LEDs and whatnot um, you can just hook that up straight to a transistor and set the whatever frequency and duty cycle you want and experiment it sports a serial port control at 96 uh, baud, 9600 baud um, and setting PWM frequency okay that's what I was so if I press and hold it will change the way it displays the frequency it should okay let's go back to the board and try to work out that frequency setting um, as displayed over here because it's uh, yeah it just seems not entirely straight straightforward but I'm going to try to follow those instructions and uh, get it all set okay now I get it um, so in when you're in the FR mode either FR1 or FR2 let's do FR1 you've got three sort of modes over here because there's only three digits on the display depending on how many dots you display that's the sort of multiplier that you have so if I press for a while and hold it it all the dots disappear and that's there is uh, no multiplier so this is the frequency in Hertz that we should be getting on the output and you can by pressing up and down you can just simply um, set it to given frequency but in this mode if I press and hold set for a while and then release it then one dot appears um, and this means it's a multiplier by well it goes from a hundred Hertz which would be uh, zero one so it's a multiplier by a thousand so that's a multiplier by one thousand so if we can uh, this would be 100 Hertz and it will go up to 99.9 .9 kilohertz and then if I press it again and release it all the three dots light up on the display and in this mode um, it the frequency it can do is from 1 kilohertz to 150 kilohertz so that would be 1 kilohertz would be this oops no I've pressed the wrong button there we go FR1 so this is 1 kilohertz and it can go to 150 kilohertz and it goes in uh, slightly higher increments in this mode so that's 70 kilohertz um, 112 and 150 kilohertz I guess I understand what they've put the three dots over here like this that's because um, if you put the dot anywhere else it would have uh, yeah it would have been misleading it would have showed a different number um, so it's better to display all of them so you know you're in the higher mode okay let's do some testing so this is the setup I've got here my DSO 068 um, oscilloscope connected to the same power supply as this which means I don't need to use the ground clip to make it easier all I have to do is take the pointy probe and stick it into one of the pins let's use the PWM, PWM1 output and we can see the scope is set on times one and oh, we should actually AC couple there we go uh, 0.659 kilohertz so 659 hertz and this is set to 61 so close enough let's go up okay and there it is so let's twiddle a little bit with the scope and actually look at the signal okay I've changed it over to a scope uh, moved it a little bit so it's maybe a little bit better visible and there we go so that's uh, at one microsecond right now per division and we can increase that a little bit that's a uh, half a microsecond per division and we've got the unit set to 814 Hertz so if I keep increasing this uh, that's precise that was showing one kilohertz so okay so it's not changing it live as uh, as I keep pressing the button you have to let go of the button and then it sets that frequency so you can see as I'm going down the 
the duty the or well, the frequency increases the, the the graph on the scope stretches and as I go up higher it will become tighter and tighter down to one kilohertz at half a microsecond per division um, so yeah that's a one microsecond to complete a full cycle which is one kilohertz precisely and if we can change it to one you can see the, the whole change of the cycle happens within one division so that's exactly that so that's five microseconds and just over one division to so about three divisions to complete the cycle at 76 as you can see that's at 100 kilohertz 99.9 .9 and five microseconds per division two divisions to complete the cycle there we go that's uh, at 10 and everything is within the whole cycle is within one division so yeah this thing works quite nice let's have a look at the duty cycle let's see so i switched it over to 500 hertz and let's press it one to go into duty du1 and now we can increase the duty cycle and as you can see as i increase the duty cycle that uh, the time difference between time spent at VCC and ground changes so right now at 90% we've got only very tiny valley over here that goes to the bottom and most of the time the signal is at the top um, the higher the duty cycle the more time the signal spends on the top and very little at the bottom um, if you were driving an LED for example and that would mean that LED would be very bright right now that's at 25 let's change that's 25 percent so you can see that one division is spent at the top and three uh, at the bottom which means that's a 25 percent duty cycle um, and yeah that's all there is to it and it's a really handy module it's a really cool thing to have and really quickly looking at the board there isn't much visible we've got the three buttons at the bottom the outputs here pw1 ground pw2 and ground and those are driven by those two transistors there's a couple of resistors in here the serial port right here a diode some protection diode and a voltage regulator there's a cap and what you can do according to the website you can if you wanted your signal to go higher than 5 volts or right now it's set to 5 volts uh, you can supply this unit with a higher voltage supply and then on the back of it you have to cut this trace over here and that would then in turn it would make it will make the your output if you're supplying it plus minus 12 volt or plus 12 volts it will go 12 volts to zero not 5 to zero there is a micro underneath the display and it's difficult to work out what it is without the soldering but I don't think I want to do it do it with this module because I quite like it I, I think it's brilliant I don't want to damage this this little module I really really do like and uh, I think what I'm going to do I'll make a little box for it so so it's a little bit more robust and use it for quick projects as a quick PWM PWM source of variable frequency one of the most clever and handy things you can have in your lab okay that I think that's it for this video so if you want one of those head over to um, icstation.com and get one use the discount code you'll get it for next to nothing thank you very much if you stayed with me this long and subscribe for more random stuff give me a like on this video that is a must and for the time being take care